Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today I am sharing a bee bettered version of 2017's Forest Cleansing Balm. I remember being absolutely smitten with its soft, creamy consistency when I first made it. It was the first cleansing balm I'd made that was thickened with fatty thickeners, and wow, what a change from waxes. The original has found many fans over the years for its rich, indulgent texture and easy rinse off. This updated version has been fully percentageified, slightly simplified, made a wee bit gentler, and then I have refined the manufacturing method for peak creaminess. What is a cleansing balm? A cleansing balm is an anhydrous or water-free cleansing product that contains a small amount of emulsifier for that balm to milk magic and really lovely rinse off. If you've ever used a cleansing oil, think of a cleansing balm as kind of the same thing. It's just been thickened up so it has a balm consistency instead of a oil consistency. The first thing I did in my bee betterification of this formulation was I fully percentageified it and then I smoothed out the numbers a bit. If you'd like to learn how to do this with a formulation that's not already presented in percents, I have an entire blog post and video on how to do this, so I'll link to both of those in the partner blog post. I left the precise essential oil blend from the 2017 version out of this formulation because I knew I wasn't going to be doing exactly that again. And so I just left it out while I percentageified the rest of the ingredients and then worked in 0.3% space for a fragrance or an essential oil at the end. We're going to make a 100 gram or three and a half ounce batch of this cleansing balm today. That's a pretty solid amount of cleansing balm and should last you a month or two if you use it daily. Remember, if you are looking for the full written formula with written instructions, links to places to buy all the ingredients, substitution information, information on shelf life and more, you'll find all of that in the complete free partner blog post that's linked in the description box below. We'll begin by weighing out the six ingredients for the heated phase of this cleansing balm. You'll need 10 grams of emulsifying wax NF and this is the ingredient that gives this cleansing balm its balm to milk magic and lovely rinse off. This is pretty much the same amount of emulsifying wax NF as I used in the original formulation but in this updated version it is our only rinse off ingredient. The original also included approximately 8% polysorbate 80. I opted to drop the polysorbate 80 and use just emulsifying wax NF, not only to simplify the ingredient list a wee bit, but it also makes the product a bit gentler. A few people mentioned that the original was a bit strong for their skin, and quite a few commenters didn't have polysorbate 80, but they did have the emulsifying wax enough, so I thought that this was a good change to make. If you want to keep the polysorbate 80 in this formulation, you absolutely can. Simply swap 8% or less of the fractionated coconut oil that we'll run into later for some polysorbate 80. If you're looking for an alternative to the emulsifying wax enough, you can try a different emulsifying wax like Olive M1000. The bulk of this formulation is a blend of two inexpensive liquid oils. 50 grams of fractionated coconut oil is fully half of this formulation. Feel free to use a different lightweight liquid oil instead though. This formulation is a good place to use up any carrier oils that you have. They're nearing the end of their shelf life as you'll probably finish the cleansing balm quite quickly before they go rancid. 10 grams of castor oil boosts the cleansing power of the balm a bit. I first started using castor oil for cleansing when I tried the oil cleansing method absolutely ages ago, and while the OCM didn't stick as part of my skincare routine, I have included castor oil in oil cleansers ever since, and I love it. If you don't have castor oil, you can replace it with more fractionated coconut oil. The formulation is thickened into creamy, balmy loveliness with a blend of 19.2 grams stearic acid and 5 grams cetyl alcohol. I kept the blend of stearic acid and cetyl alcohol for thickening from the 2017 version because I loved the feel and consistency that that blend gives this formulation. If you don't have both, my patron Greet tried using cetyryl alcohol instead of this blend and reported that it worked well. If you would like to learn more about stearic acid, cetyl alcohol, and cetyryl alcohol, I have shared ingredient deep dives on all three of these fatty thickeners. Make sure you check them out to learn more about these versatile, awesome ingredients. I'm often asked about using true waxes like beeswax instead of fatty thickeners in formulations like this. I don't generally recommend doing that because true waxes don't rinse off the skin as easily as fatty thickeners do. Newbie Me made some cleansing balms that left my face like really tacky back in the day, so I've learned that lesson the sticky way. And the last ingredient in our heated phase is five grams of French green clay. And this is just a bit more clay than I used in the 2017 version as I love clay. Once you've weighted all the ingredients for the heated phase, combine them in a small beaker or a heat resistant glass measuring cup. I opted to use a glass measuring cup for this formulation because they are thicker glass than my beakers and I wanted that heat capacity so that the formulation cools more slowly. Melt everything through 
through. Because I'm using a measuring cup, I need to use a water bath, since unlike a beaker, you don't want to put a measuring cup straight on the heat source. Keep an eye on the mixture as it melts, stirring to make sure no little dots of stearic acid escape melting. Once the mixture has fully melted, remove it from the heat. How quickly this cleansing balm cools will depend on how big your batch size is and what you've made it in. A larger batch will cool more slowly than a smaller batch, and a batch made in thick glass will cool more slowly than a batch made in thin glass or a plastic or thin metal container. We'll use a cool water bath to speed cooling up a bit. In the interest of keeping this balm nice and smooth, we don't want it to cool too quickly, so that's why there's not a lot of ice in my water bath, just, just a little bit. <laughs> Place the measuring cup containing your melted balm in your cool water bath and stir constantly until it's not hot anymore. You can kind of tap it to the inside of your wrist to check. Once it's not hot anymore, we will weigh in our cool down phase. You'll need half a gram of vitamin E and 0.3 grams of a fragrance or essential oil of choice. I'm using a fragrance oil in this updated version instead of the original blend of four different essential oils purely because I don't have all of the original essential oils anymore. I'm using a fragrance called White Birch and Vetiver, which has a lovely foresty scent to it. If you want to use essential oils, you could use spruce or fir. Both are lovely. Continue stirring the balm until it reaches trace. Make sure you are paying attention to the bottom of the measuring cup. And as your spatula starts to bring up soft, solid bits, pull the measuring cup out of the ice bath and stir really well to make sure that those soft solid bits incorporate evenly and you don't end up with harder clumpy bits. Bringing the balm to trace is another difference from the 2017 version. I learned about trace in my Formula Botanica coursework a few months after I shared the original version and I knew it would be a great change to this updated formulation. Bringing a balm like this to trace helps ensure it has an even creamy texture throughout, rather than a hard top and a gooey underlayer. Once you've reached about a medium trace, pour the balm into some wide mouth jars. I'm using two 50 milliliter low profile plastic screw top jars from Yellow Bee. They were gifts. Carefully transfer the jars to your fridge to fully set up, and once they have chilled through, remove them from the fridge, let them come to room temperature, and that is it. To use this cleansing balm, I typically massage about a pea-sized amount of it into dry skin. I'll then wet my hands and massage those wet hands into the balm. It'll turn all milky, and then I'll wipe it off with a damp cloth. You can also choose to work the balm up with a bit of water right in your palm before then massaging it into your skin. The cloth isn't strictly required, but I always prefer to use a cloth, even with commercially available cleansing balms, so that is what what I develop and test around. As this balm is unpreserved, take care to keep it dry as you use it. Don't go dipping wet hands into it or keeping it in your shower. If kept dry, this cleansing balm should easily last a year or two before any of the oils in it start to go rancid. If you do want to add a preservative to this cleansing balm, you can. I've included information about how to do that in the partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Emulsifying Wax NF, the balm to milk magic ingredient in this formulation, click here. And if you'd like to learn more about stearic acid, one of our beloved thickeners, click here. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!